Welcome inside the RX Muscle Studios here in New York for another episode of Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com and take advantage of our October specials, 20% off 44 serve isolized, buy one, get one free on macadamia nut oil, and of course, free shipping for orders over $99. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. 30-minute question and answer with Dave Palumbo. Anything from training, diet, supplementation, questions on IFBB pros and competitions, it is all on the table. As we now bring in Dave Palumbo, Dave, the entire bodybuilding world is abuzz with yesterday's Iron Debate featuring Bader Budai, the mystery figure behind Big Rami. Yeah, I... uh... The most exciting part of the show for me was watching him. Um, you know, if anyone was paying attention, he was on his yacht, and he, he mentioned that a couple of times. And uh, the background was the city of Kuwait at night. It was gorgeous, and uh, I, I was so I was so jealous that I wasn't there on the boat with him. Uh, but uh, you know, it's interesting to get people's uh, perspective on situations because you know Dennis James obviously had one perspective, uh, Bada Badai another perspective. Obviously, they worked together at one point, not together anymore. And, of course, you know, I'm sure the, the, the truth remains someplace in between. But uh, the bottom line is that, you know, between Dennis and Badr Badai, uh, Rami became a household name. And, obviously, Rami's physique doing the talking. But uh, I, I like to get, you know, people's perspective on things. And I think, uh, you know, what Badr's doing there in the Middle East is, is incredible. You know, the fact that he is helping finance a lot of these pro bodybuilders, uh, we talked about uh, this way many, many times on Iron Debate that there's just not as much money in pro bodybuilding as there used to be, especially for the, the guys that maybe are not at the very, very top. And uh, the contracts are few and far between. The magazine contracts are non-existent. And so uh, what Bader's doing is, is, is really good. And I see guys that are not only in the Middle East, they're guys from around the world. Look at Ruli Winkler, Curasai, going all the way to Kuwait to train at Oxygen Gym there. And uh, I think that uh, he's, he's putting together his, uh, I call it the super team over there. And, uh, you know, once again, we got to take our hat off to him and thank him for coming on the show. And again, if you did not catch the episode from last night's Iron Debate, it is available on rxmuscle.com and, of course, on our YouTube channel. Reminder, after this show, we're going to be live with Diana Cadeau. You're not going to want to miss that following Ask Dave. As we now go to the Muscle Central Forum on rxmuscle.com, if you're not already a member, it is free to register. And we go to our good friend, BB50+. Plus. Dave, this show is worse than the kettlebell workout you've got me on. <laughs> yes, one of these days. I typically follow a low but not ketogenic carb diet, usually around 80 to 120 gram carbs per day. Over the past weekend, I sort of went off the low carbs, went on a seafood diet. My weight went from 209 to 222 in just a couple of days. How much of that was body fat? I'm now at 214 after three days back on the low carbs. What causes the extreme weight gain and loss, biologically speaking, and is it healthy? Well, you know, uh, when you're on low carb, okay, or, or no carb for that matter, uh, you're, you've basically, you're walking around with a very depleted glycogen source in your muscles and in your liver. Think of it as your car having very little gas in the tank. When your car has very little gas in the tank, it weighs a lot less, right? Um, same thing with carbs. When carbs get stored in the muscle, they get stored with water, okay? So every gram of carb, there's a certain amount of water that goes along with it. When you're depleted and you don't have a lot of carbs, you don't have a lot of water in the muscle, so you weigh less. As soon as you start binging and eating a lot of foods, specifically carb-laden foods, you start loading those carbs and the water into the muscle cells. Um, likewise, usually because you're so low carb for so long, you might even get a rebound of water retention even under the skin a little bit. Now, usually it looks really good. Um, the problem is that that weight gain is, is not is artificial. It's not fat gain. You cannot gain fat in three days, okay? If you put on fat, maybe it's a quarter of a pound. You're not going to gain any more than that. That's why when you go on low carb, after doing some kind of a binge up, after about a week, the weight comes right off again because you're depleting out that water again. Let's go to our live stream audience and check in with Travis BB Forever. Dave, what are your thoughts on muscle memory? Is it a real thing or bro science? I had to take a year off from training due to several hip surgeries. I still have some size being a natural lifter, but I was wondering what I could expect as far as being back to where I was a year ago. 
Well, muscle memory is a very, very real phenomenon. And up until recently, we really didn't know what was causing it. Now, for those of you who don't know, muscle memory is, uh, let's say it takes you 10 years to put 15 pounds of muscle on. And then you stop weight training for, say, three months, four months, five months, six months, and you lose, you know, the 15 pounds. Once you go back to the gym and start training, it's not going to take you another 10 years to put that muscle back on. It might take you six weeks. Why is that? Well, they, we've always said that the muscles have memory. They knew what they were at, at at a certain point, and they're able to come back to that point. Well, we didn't know the scientific mechanism until recently. And Scott Connolly, who's my mentor of sorts, he kind of elucidated that to me, at least explained it to me, uh, in a very interesting term. Now, if you think about muscle cells, every muscle cell has a certain number of nuclei. And muscle cells are not round. They're long fibers. And these fibers have... Let's say, for instance, okay, we have one muscle fiber that has six nuclei in it. Okay, that's not realistic. Let's just assume that way. Okay, um, each nuclei allows the muscle cell to to gain a certain amount of size given the stimulus of weight training and anabolic steroids or whatever else it entails. As we grow, as we add muscles, you know, size and mass to our body, what's happening is undifferentiated cells known as satellite cells which surround these muscle fibers they're just like goop so to speak uh, stem cell goop i call them and as we work out what the body realizes it needs more reinforcement in those muscle fibers so it takes these undifferentiated cells and it turns them into true muscle cells and these nuclei then fuse with the existing muscle fibers so instead of having six nuclei now the muscle fiber might have seven or eight nuclei Okay, and as we grow and, and we get more and more nuclei added. Now, when you stop weight training, the size of that muscle fiber may shrink, but the number of nuclei that are there are still there. That's the genetic information there that tells the cell, you know, how big you can possibly get or how small you can get or how energy efficient you can be or how well you can maximize and, and oxidize fat. So when you go back to the gym and start eating again and training and, and creating a stimulus, those cells will go back, though those fibers will go back to the size that they were because the cells have memory in the way of the nucleus there, those new enhanced numbers of nuclei, okay? That's what muscle memory is. And that's why it's easier to put muscle back on after you've already done it. Johnny Salazar, producer, I know you watched that, so you're going to clip that, right? Because that was a thorough answer, and I think that's one that we will use for our next promo. Let's move on now to Big Al Williams. Dave, I have a couple of questions. First is about your species, Testalize. I just got off a 20-week cycle of pro hormones, and I'm two weeks into taking Testalize. Is there a cycle period for it, or can I take it year-round without any down regulation or side effects? Also, I have a lot of – so let's, let's go with that one first, and then I'll go to the, ne the next question. Yes, uh, testolize can be used year-round if you want to. Um, most guys that do cycle anabolic steroids will only use it in the off-season because it's, you know, it, it's not necessary necessarily while you're on a cycle if you're using uh, estrogen blockers like a Remedex and stuff like that. But if you don't have that stuff, testolize is great because testolize inhibits estrogen formation, it inhibits DHT formation, and it directly stimulates natural testosterone production. So it's ideal to take when you're off-cycle. Um, However, when you're on cycle, it will also minimize estrogen and DHT, which is, which is a good thing, obviously, because we don't want testosterone getting converted to this other stuff because then it's not staying as testosterone. It's not going to be available to build muscle. So you can stay on it. There's nothing toxic in there at all. They're all natural ingredients. They just inhibit certain enzymes in the body so that we can maximize the fact that we want to keep testosterone as testosterone and we want to keep the body's natural production of testosterone continuing to move forward now if you're on once again if you're on an anabolic steroid cycle that's going to suppress your natural production uh, to the to the point that even testolize <laughs> won't you know keep your natural production going but once again when you're on a cycle that's not important so post cycle very important to take a product like that i think that's very helpful on cycle it's helpful but not as helpful let's go to uh his next question and that was he, he has a lot of grinding and some minor pain in his left knee and wanted to know if uh Hyalur I can't even pronounce hyaluronic. this. Yeah, hyaluronic acid added to a glu glucosamine and chondroitin mixes. Any benefits? Heavy leg extensions at full range of motions are the culprit to his issue, and he believes that he's lightened the weight in half but still has a little di discomfort. Is there an alternative to perform them or different variation, or should he just ditch the movement entirely? What was the movement he was doing? He was talking about heavy leg extensions okay. at full range of motion. First of all, you have damage in the joint. 
um, some of the connective tissues, some of the you know articulating surfaces in there in your knee are probably or in your hip are hurting. Okay, they're damaged. They need to heal. Okay, the best thing to do to heal them would be to take a very high glu high potency glucosamine sulfate and MSM product. Uh, I'm not trying here to try to pitch my own products, but Arthrolyze happens to be a very high potency glucosamine MSM product containing four grams of each product. You know, in a daily dose. If you don't take as if you don't take at least four thousand milligrams of each one of those ingredients every day, you're not going to heal your joint and connective tissue. You could take growth hormone. You could take whatever you want. You got to give your body the raw materials to heal it. Once you heal the area, now you can start figuring out strategies to train so that it doesn't happen again. Now, it might have just been a freak thing that happened, and you and you and you injured something, and it just never got a chance to heal. Um, likewise, I would probably go to see an ART practitioner, active release techniques practitioner, so that they can work out some of the scar tissue that's in that area because I'm sure you've been compensating and, 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 and using muscles that you haven't been using, and that's going to also not bode well. Even after it heals, you're going to be moving, the muscles will be moving in the wrong plane of motion. So we want to fix that. So ART therapy combined with, you know, a high glucosamine MSM product like Arthrolyze, you know, stay on it and then start light. Start light doing your exercises. And I believe that after, you know, a couple of weeks, you'll be able to get back to the way you were doing it before, full range motion with the same exercises. You're watching Ask Dave on RxMuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com. A reminder, the Iron Debate with Badr Budai is live on rxmuscle.com as well as our YouTube channel in case you missed it. We're getting all sorts of buzz, all sorts of views, and all sorts of feedback from the episode. Highly controversial over the last couple of episodes, so you're not going to want to miss that. And of course, Diana Cadeau live with C Diana Cadeau following this episode as we now go to our Facebook questions and check in with Rob Star And Dave, last week we got a poem. Are you ready for another one? Sure. This one's a little shorter though. Roses are red, peck tears turn blue. I hate this show and both of you. Nicely done. That's a winner right there. Which client starting body type do you prefer to train out of these two for a first show prep? Very skinny or very overweight? Is it easier for you to add muscle on skinny clients or cut fat on overweight clients? Uh, good question. Not bad, but uh, I think that uh, it's equally as challenging. I'll tell you why. Because putting mu people think it's easier to eat food, you know, jam a lot of food down because it's fun. It's not fun. When you start bulking and you really have to eat a ton of food because you have a fast metabolism, guess what happens? You hate food after about two or three weeks. It's not that easy. And you know what? No one likes to give up food and have to really starve to lose body fat either. So both situations are not pleasant. But the great thing about coaching is that I don't experience any of the unpleasantness. I just get to inflict it on the other people. So for me, it doesn't matter. I, I can help someone who's skinny gain weight. I can help someone who's overweight lose body fat um, as long as they're willing to work and suffer. Uh, there's always a little bit of suffering involved. Uh, you know, nothing comes easy in life where everyone would do it and be successful at it. So uh, to me, it doesn't matter. I like the challenge. I like different challenges. I, if I had to do the same, if I had to work with the same type of athlete every single day, you know, you know, 50 people a day, I'd want to blow my brains out. So I like having diversity and having to try to solve problems in different ways. Let's go to Christos Panayotu, still on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash rxmuscle.com, all one word. I hate this show so much, I'd rather watch Dave Palumbo's Muppet Show featuring George Farah and the Camel Crew. That seems to be the term of the week. <laughs> Dave, what's your knowledge and opinion about SARM supplements? Considering they are currently legal, do you think at some point they're going to be banned? Well, I mean, they're not really legal. SARMs are uh, you know, prescription drugs in Europe. Uh, they're certainly not Deche compliant in the sense that um, their natural foods, okay, or their natural, uh, you know, ingredients that you can find in nature. So they're questionably illegal, okay? They're questionably illegal, I should say. Um, do they work? Yeah, they work. But a lot of people always want me to compare them to anabolic steroids. And anabolic steroids work at least 100 times better than SARMs do. Uh, that means that if you use anabolics and you take SARMs, you probably won't notice any, anything, okay? They're probably not going to do anything for you. However, if a woman would have used some SARMs, she'd probably get a little bit of, of, of muscle growth and, and hardness from them. 
Um, I don't know too many people that get great results in them. I do know people that notice something from them. And I guess if you're a natural person where you don't want to go the anabolic steroid route and you want to be able to go to a store and buy something legally, SARMs are definitely a good option because you definitely can make gains on them. Let's go to our Twitter feed. If you want to tweet a question, use the hashtag AskDave. Let's go to Zach Parks. Dave, I've recently been studying a lot about PEDs. Do you know any legitimate books I can get for all the specifics? You know, years ago, people were trying to get me to, to, to write a book about anabolic steroids. And you know what? It, at the time, I was into them, and I might have seen myself doing it. But you know what? I got to be honest with you. Bill Llewellyn wrote a great book called Anabolics. And, you know, he sends it to me every time he comes out with a new rendition of it. It's, in, it's like an encyclopedia. It might actually be too big. And I think it's intimidating for a lot of people. But it's not the kind of book you sit down and read it from cover to cover. You read a couple pages here. You read a couple pages there. You, you, if, you're, if you're looking up, if you want to know something about aromatase inhibitors, you want to know something about testosterone, you go to that section and you read it. And, and, and that's how you, you knock the book off. But that book is probably 98% of what's in there is, is 100% accurate and good information. There's a couple things I might have a few, uh, you know, a few, you know, issues with. But other than that, I think it's a terrific, terrific book, and I don't, I don't think it could do any better. If I made, if I did write a book, it would be, it would be more of a summarized book that was just like a user's quick user's guide. Um, but the bottom line is that if you want to, ed you should really educate yourself before you take any anabolic steroids, and I think that's a great book. Now we go to our Instagram questions again. Our Instagram handle: Instagram.com/official underscore rx muscle that is where we have so much banter throughout the day if you're not already following us that is where you want to follow us on social media and of course you want to join up on the muscle central forum that is where we have all our analysis all our banter about the shows that we do here on rx muscle and of course in the ifbb competitions we go to and I'm, at some point i'm going to figure out your name rite paliha or palija dave when will you bring tom platz on rx muscle I, I mentioned this before. I, I interviewed Tom years ago when I was with Muscular Development on the radio show, and I thought it was a great interview, and, uh, you know, he's very informative. I, I, I'm going to have to contact him because a lot of people have been asking me about Tom Platts, Tom Platts, Tom Platts. So I guess, you know, by popular demand, if people want him, I'm going to have to get him. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to him, and we'll see if we can get him on the radio show, maybe even on a, a TV interview. Here's a loaded question from Hakan Hansen underscore NMS. Who is the best coach in the business? You know, the best coach is really defined by, you know, who they're working with. Because for one person, I might be the best coach. For another person, Chris Aceto might be the best coach. For another person, Hani Rambad might be the best coach. So it depends on, you know, personalities and how they mesh and what your needs are. Some people need more, you know, attention. Some people don't want a lot of attention. They just want someone who's going to answer questions straight out. Another person might want things very scientific and another person might just just really just need someone that's going to be there that who can always you know uh, you know hear their problems. So the best coach is the coach that is going to work well for you. So you have to figure out what your needs are, and then once you know what your needs are, then you have to go out and look for the coach that fills those needs. Let's go to Mr. C Shadows. I hate this show so much. I'd rather have George, the real police officer, Farrah, prep me for a show and tell me, brother, you are shredding. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, all right. <laughs> you, you see, D Dave, you're going to have to do the imitation on this one. It says, George the Real Police Farah, uh, prep me for a show and tell me, brother, you are shredded when I look eight weeks out. <laughs> brother, you look amazing. You're ripped to the bone, shredded. Rami, you weigh 2316. No one will touch you at Olympia. <laughs> All right, so he Where's wants... my puppet? No, oh, Where's goodness. the Farrah puppet? I got to get the puppet. <laughs> so he wants to know how you came about learning and doing keto. Did you do this with your own preps right off the bat? And do you always do this style of prep with your clients? I could, I could tell you the exact day <laughs> that I, re I realized that fats were super important for bodybuilders. I, was, I had won the junior nationals in, in uh, the, the heavyweight class in 1995. Uh <clears throat> then in 96, I was preparing for the USA. And I probably should, I weighed 258 at the junior national. I should have been at least 268, 270 for the, for the USA. I weighed in at about 259, 260 maybe. And I was flat as could be. And I was eating just 
super high protein and I was eating, you know, very low carb. I was eating carbs, but I was eating lower carbs and almost no fat. And I just looked flat as could be. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start. I stopped doing cardio. I started eating a lot of red meat. Um, I started adding a little McDonald's into my meals. I was eating peanut butter with my, my protein shakes. And even though I didn't raise, I, I did raise my carbs a little bit, but not much. Maybe they were up to like 150, 200 grams. All of a sudden, my whole body changed. I started looking fuller, rounder. I was more ripped. And eight weeks, I think it was eight weeks between the USA and the Nationals that year. The Nationals were earlier. And I came in and I took fourth. That was the year Jay Cutler won. Um, and Tom Prince was second. Orville Burke was third. Uh, even Jim Mannion came up to me and said that you looked amazing. And you know he very rarely ever gave me compliments. So that was, that was I, then I realized, you know what, holy mackerel. You know what? Everyone's so worried about protein, no one's worried about fats enough. So I started incorporating more fats, and I felt I found that I didn't really need to eat a lot of carbs. I can keep my carbs 100 or less as long as I ate enough protein and fat. And I said, and I started studying, and I realized that the fats and the protein are what really repair and build muscle. It wasn't the carbs. The carbs were merely a fuel source. So why should I eliminate fats, which were necessary for muscle cell repair and fullness, when in fact they were necessary. So I said, well, I'll put the fats in, I'll figure out how much my body needs, and then I'll just add just enough carbs to fuel my workouts. And that's what I did. And that's how I always competed. Now, I had a very fast metabolism. So, you know, sometimes I would go super low and I would kind of get into a ketogenic state. And when I would get into that ketogenic state, because my carbs were so low, I noticed that my brain was really clear and I, I could think clearly and I felt good and I had no cravings. And I said, holy mackerel, while Dave Palumbo as a competitor doesn't need to be in ketosis all the time. This would probably work great with clients that I work with, especially people that were really carb sensitive. And I started using it with people and I said, oh my God. And people were like, I love this diet. I don't feel hungry on it. I don't have cravings. I, I feel strong in the gym. Yeah, I don't have as much endurance, but I feel good and my body looks good. And it, and, and it just it kind of just mushroomed from there and I kind of really developed a protocol on how to use it. Uh, and apply it to both women, men, you know, all, you know, and, and that kind of stuff. And you know, be, then it obviously bloomed to bikini competitors, and figure competitors. But bottom line was, it was discovered by accident. And once I did, I realized that I had I had stumbled onto something that was very important. Relevant question from Quintina Atwell, Dave. I know you utilize mac nut oil and other oils for healthy fats, but what about others like almond butter, avocado, etc.? If so or not, could you explain the difference between these foods in regards of how they are digested and processed differently? I, I like to vary the fat sources. So I like to use whole eggs. I like to use avocados. I love mac oil because it's a, a really strong source of omega-3, excuse me, of, of monounsaturated fats. I also like to use a little red meat. I like to use salmon for omega-3s. Um, bottom line is that Varying the fat sources is as important as varying the protein sources because your body utilizes these fats differently. You know, certain saturated fats are needed in the diet, certain monounsaturated fats are, are needed in the diet, and certain polyunsaturated fats, which are also known as the essential fatty acids, the omega 3s and 6s. So you need to vary it up. And that's, I think, which is where you're going to see the best success by varying it. What are the differences? Well, you know, mac oil is great because you can cook with it. Omega 6 fats, like almond butters and uh, cashew butters, they're predominantly polyunsaturated omega-6 fats. You cook with those and they burn so you, and they get destroyed. So you, you got to know which fats you can heat and which fats you can't. Um, obviously, saturated fats can be heated. That's why you can cook eggs and not have a problem with that. Same thing with red meat. So once again, the most, most of your fat should come from monounsaturated fats like mac oil, olive oil, avocado oil. Second most uh, amount of fat should come from your polyunsaturated or essential fatty acids, your omega-3s and 6s, fish oils, <laughs> primrose oils, nuts, stuff like that. And the least amount of fat, but you still want some, should come from your saturated fats, your red meat, your uh, chicken to a certain degree, and your whole eggs. Hoodman521 wants to know, well, first he starts with Dave, this show is as bad as a three-day-old shaker bottle. Wanting to add serious signs without regard to being cut. How many IUs of GH should I be taking daily? And is a gram of test a week too much? Um, I think one gram of testosterone per week is ideal, 1,000 milligrams a week. I think that's not too high, but it's high enough to get maximal uh, effects. I think also anywhere from two to four IUs of growth hormone a day is ideal. 
you know, do people take 12 IUs of growth? I mean, yeah, but I don't think it's, I think it's overkill. I don't think you need it. I think you're just going to hold excessive amounts of water. It's not cost effective. I think anywhere from two to four IUs is, is ideal. Uh, back in the, in the 90s, guys used two to four IUs of GH. They used 1,000 milligrams of test, and they grew really well because they trained super hard. And speaking of shaker bottles, three-day-old shaker bottles, back in the day when Metrix first came out in like 91 or two, when you would shake up a metric shake in the shaker bottle, if you would leave the old bottle in your car for like two or three hours, when you opened that bottle, the smell that came out of there was so rancid. <laughs> I don't know what caused it, but it was it was it was absolutely it was almost intolerable the smell. Like you almost wanted to throw the shaker bottle out. I had to I never did it. What I would do is I would shake it up, the shake, and I would bring the shaker bottle into the gym and wash it out just because I couldn't stand that smell. So if anyone could figure out what caused it, that would be a, a, a nice future episode of uh, Stump the Jumbo, that's for sure. You're watching Ask Dave on RxMuscle.com. Reminder, after this show, we're live with Diana Cadeau right after Ask Dave. You're not going to want to miss that. Keep it locked to RxMuscle.com. As we go to Lord underscore Barisic, Dave, what do you think about carving up for a show with fructose first, then other carbs after? Well, fructose is, is fruit sugar, and fruit sugar does not elicit an insulin response. What does that mean? When you take fructose in, you don't release insulin in response to it. Um, when you start carving up, you really want to drive carbs into the muscle very strongly, and insulin is a very, uh, is a very powerful hormone that does that. So uh, if anything, you want to start – your, your, your carving up process with something that stimulates a lot of insulin. Uh, I usually use white rice. I know some guys, like I know Jason Arntz uses my carbolize because it, it, because it stimulates a lot of insulin release. So, um, you know, whether you do it via shake or you do it via food, I would probably start the carving process in the very beginning, especially when you do your last weight training session with something that will elicit a high insulin response. Now a question that we've been waiting for for the last 24 hours, ever since we had that iron debate with Bader Buddha, and it comes from Global Nagasaki. Dave, when will Dennis James and Butter go head-to-head -head in iron debate? I'd love to have that next week, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't think Dennis is going to talk to me. And when Dennis doesn't, uh, wasn't happy with the fact that we were going to have Bader on, and I told him, I said I wouldn't let, uh, I wouldn't let Bader uh, you know, say anything that was uh, – disrespectful to him and I think that you know I think that Sid both you and I defended Dennis when sure. uh, Bader implied that Dennis was um, criticizing or being very disrespectful to, to the Muslim athletes or to the Arabic world and you know because De Dennis had made that that comment about the camel crew and I know and Dennis knows and the whole world knows that Dennis was kidding around he sure. was just being funny and I I'm look I, I'm guilty of, of politically inc of political incorrectness all the time because I always say things that you know, I think are funny, and I make fun of black men, and that doesn't mean I don't like them and I don't respect them. It's just what I do, and I know Dennis was just cracking some, you know, making some cracks there. So, uh, you know, in that sense, I would, but I, but I still would like to see Dennis and Bader argue and, and and debate some of the points, and I would be willing to take questions from both of them, combine the questions, and and do an all-out iron debate, just Bader versus Dennis, uh, you know, one on one, if they would both be up for it. So you basically, an iron debate battle royale. There you go. Let's go to Dr. Would that be Guru Mania 2? I, I think that would have to be its own classification. Okay. I mean, there's Guru Mania. That might be Guru Wars 2. That would be Guru Wars 2. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go to Dr. Superdose. Dave, wondering if you get your teeth treated, what do you do to keep your teeth so white? I'm wondering the same thing. You, see, we get so many questions about my teeth all the time, don't we? I mean, we, we've had multiple questions about this, and I've, I've actually done videos on how I, I bleached my teeth like five years ago, and I, I bleached them in a dentist's office. That really didn't make them that white, and I've said this before, um, but I wore trays, the bleaching trays, and I, put the I bought the strongest gel you can get, the 35% gel. I bought it on Amazon.com. I put a, a dab of the gel on, on all the little tooth trays, and I popped them in my mouth, and I wear them at night. I wore them at night for two weeks straight. Now, I, the, the, the trick with bleaching your teeth is how sensitive your teeth are. 
A lot of people's teeth are very sensitive and they can't take the gels, especially the strong gels on there for a long time. If you can't keep the gels on for a long period of time, they don't, your teeth really don't bleach that well. Now you can try to do them an hour or two a day, but it might take you a year before you get them white. And most people give up before then. I would wear them overnight for eight hours with the strongest gel. And after two weeks, my teeth were like almost see-through. I had to stop it. People were telling me my teeth were too white. Because I had a, my, my endodontist friend, uh, Dr. Bill, told me that your color of your teeth should match the whites of your eyes. So my teeth had gotten whiter than the whites of my eyes, so I did it. So he said, you got to let them get darker. I said, no, I'm just going to get my whites of my eyes whiter. So I just did a de my detox program, and they got whiter. So by the way, I mentioned the fact that I, I have, a, you know, I've, I have this three-week detoxification program that I've, I've designed. Uh, Triple H, I have Triple H on it now. And Triple H actually texted me the other day, and he said, what's the name of that program you got me on? I said, it's called the Palumbo Three-Week Detoxification. I said, I made it up. So once I, I mentioned that on the radio show, and I said that, look, I would be willing to give it out for free for anyone who asked, I said, just email me at huge285 at AOL.com. Well, ever since Monday's Heavy Muscle Radio, where I actually volunteered to give it out, I've gotten, and I've counted now, 87 people asking me for that detox. So every day I've been sending like like 25 or 20 you know, uh, detoxes out. And if anyone out there wants the, the detox, you know, feel free to email me. I just want to make one more announcement before I forget. This weekend is the Secrets to Becoming a Diet Guru course on Saturday. Um, it's pretty much too late to sign up, but if, if, if you're in the area and you want to come down, uh, you can, in, in fact, um, still sign up. I have one spot left. If you want to come down, you can bring cash and, and pay me in person. It starts 9 a.m. here in the uh, RX Muscle Studios here in Westbury, New York, 110 Swam Street. You can look it up on my DavePalumbo.com website. And everyone who has signed up, people as far as Australia and Sweden, I will see you this Saturday. Our producer, Johnny Salas, is giving us the cue to wrap this up, but I did want to squeeze in two very quick ones. Dave, if you think you could wrap these in sure. a minute. First one is from Rusty Nate Jackson. I hate this show so much, I'm going to start my own called RX Global. I wanted to get that one in there. <laughs> and he says that he got to meet Amanda at the Olympia. She's amazing. His question is, when did you know she was the one? Um, or is that too long of, a, of an answer to... Probably. You know, pr <laughs> you know, every person I've ever dated, I always met when I was out, like, you know, not necessarily looking for a girlfriend, but, you know, in, in, in the field, so to speak. Um, I met Amanda when I was nursing my uh, quad tear for the second time I had got it reattached and I was miserable and I was in pain and I really wasn't looking for anyone and she just kind of popped up at, at the right moment and that's how I knew because because I was into her and I really didn't care about looking for a girlfriend at the time. So in essence, you know, if you could be into someone and, and you're not even in that type of mind frame, that's the right way to meet someone. So that was 100% you know, the truth. And I wanted to get this one in there because it is a question relevant to RX Muscle, and I believe that a lot of other viewers have the exact same question. Matt Fritzler, 95. Dave, I hate this show more than the Camel Crew hates Dennis James and vice versa. <laughs> My question is, what are your plans for the future of RX Muscle? It would appear that Live With is really becoming the flagship program after the recent great success. Yeah, you know, it's all about... TV, original TV live programming. I said it before. I'll say it again when I made my mission statement and Blackman wrote, Chris Decino, well, I cut back. You know, well, I, I cut back because I want to I want to focus on what we're doing here, which is, you know, original TV programming. I think that, you know, look, I go home every day. I watch YouTube. I do not watch anything else. I watch Internet TV. And that's what a lot of you guys out there are doing. And you guys who are into working out, you're into fitness, you're into bodybuilding, you want programming relevant to what you're interested in. I watch bodybuilding programming and I watch snake programming. That's what I'm interested in. And I watch it all on YouTube because it's available, there's a lot of it, and I can find the interest that I find specific to myself. And I know the hardcore bodybuilders, I know the fitness and bikini competitors, they all come to RX Muscle because we have original programming. And it's about the industry. And there's, it's not only, there's gossip, there's, you know, informational stuff, there's training, there's, um, there's nutrition. We cover everything related to the industry. In order to be the best, I got to focus on what we're doing the best, which is the TV programming. And over the next month or two, we're redoing the whole studio here. We're rebuilding this whole studio. We're actually blowing it out. We're making it bigger. Johnny Siles is going to up his game a little bit. He's, he's, we're building sets. We're building backdrops. And hopefully we're going to have a, a better, stronger 
RX Muscle uh, lineup of programming for 2016. I'm open to suggestions, but we have a couple new ideas ourselves that we're going to be launching. Um, I have a show coming up probably in the next couple of weeks called Muscle Puppets. And you guys can only imagine what's going to be going on there. And I'm open to anyone out there who wants to be a script writer, submit your scripts to me. I will be willing to make them reality. Well, you mentioned Johnny Styles. He is seconds away from jumping on the stage and strangling me if I don't end the show. Live with Diana Cadeau up next right here on RxMuscle.com. Keep it locked. Diana Cadeau, of course, the Diana Cadeau Classic is right around the corner. Diana Cadeau next on Live With. For Dave and Johnny, I'm Sadiq Farooqui. Have a good one.